Hi, this is Laura from LiveVisions.com and I wanted to give you some information today. Um, a few of you asked about the fifth house and what it meant. Um, and I wanted to give you some information on the difference between the fifth and the seventh house. The fifth house is like romance and it's children too and it's also what you find fun. You know, um, the seventh house is marriage, okay? so. You know, you may find something fun, but your seventh house is going to indicate, like, fifth house is like dating. And your seventh house is who you're going to end up married to, probably, you know. So, I'm going to give you some, I'm going to go through the signs here. I'm going to give you information on what it means to have your fifth house in different signs. Well, what if you have your fifth house in Aries? Fifth house in Aries means that you probably attract to a real go-getter type. Or you may be attracted to, like, you meet somebody right away and you like them love at first sight kind of thing or you may look before leaping into things you know and when it comes to dating you may just be like wow things move quickly when it comes to dating you know or um, this person that you draw in as far as uh, dating is concerned um, may be the type where he chases you or you like the chase or um, this person is very direct in the what they want and how what they like they're more aggressive in their nature um, you also may draw in the type of person where, um, I want to say adventurous, you know. Um, Aries is a very, it's kind of, it's a fire sign. It's more adventurous. So it's, the, what it finds fun is let's do, like, it may think, like, how do I say this? It may do things before thinking, you know. So you may get into the relationships quickly, you know, with the fifth house in Aries. You may start things quickly, things may move quickly, and you like the aggressive type, and you may draw to you the more, um, I would say, the more aggressive type of partner, you know. Um, and, and I would say Aries is a feisty sign, so you may like to have that little verbal banter between the two of you that spices things up, you know. Um, especially if you have Mars here. There's more, maybe there could be more arguing, um, but I would say... With Aries here, it's more adventurous. It's more, you like that verbal banter. Both of you may like the chase of the relationship, you know. Um, and it's a more aggressive sign. But if you have Taurus on the cusp of your seventh house, I'm sorry, your fifth house, my mistake, um, you would draw to you partners who are mostly stable. Um, probably slow to move, quick, you know, so slow to move uh, the relationship forward. Uh, things may progress more slowly with Taurus. You're more careful about partnerships and who you choose. And you may be, um, what you might find fun is probably things of a more sensual nature, you know. You probably like cooking or um, things that you find fun might be something of, uh, you know, you like how your partner smells. He, You know, or the way, what your partner may like is the same thing. So how he or she smells, or you maybe like cooking together, or anything that really, because it heightens your senses, you know, you would probably find enjoyable, you know. Um, massage, you may like massage more, or you may be, oh, it's all about the sensuality of things, you know. Maybe you like to do the, the scented bath oils with your partner, or, you know, um, hot tub massages, or whatever. This is something that you would find Enjoyable. Fifth house is not only it's dating and it's what you find enjoyable. It's different than the seventh house. Seventh house is marriage. Okay. Fifth house is also children. So, but we're just talking, this is going to be my romance series. So we're just talking about how it would be romantically for you. So if you have um, Gemini on your fifth house cusp, you're really attracted to a partner who is a communicator. He can talk, he or she can talk about anything and everything somebody who's quite interesting and really um, I want to say witty somebody who's really witty um, somebody who likes to learn and uh, probably is just a wealth of knowledge but on every little subject you know um, what else y you probably would get bored in relationships you know you yourself could get bored and you could draw in partners who are fickle you know so you Gemini's the sign of you know I like strawberry but yeah, I like vanilla. But chocolate's good too. And so is pecan. So it's like you want to try them all. So you may date a lot. And you may date more than one person at a time. 
and you may draw in partners who are fickle, who maybe say one thing, do another, who, you know, are just as fickle as you are in some way. So keep that in mind. But I would say what really gets you going is probably the verbal banter back and forth, somebody who's witty, somebody who carry a really good conversation, somebody who's very interesting. If somebody is beautiful and the lights are on and nobody's home, would not be of interest to you. You really want somebody who's really um, conversational, articulate, you know. Um, so that's Gemini. So Cancer, oh, also I have to say something about Gemini. It's a highly sexual sign. So you may have a higher sexual appetite, you know, than other signs, you know. But I would say uh, one thing, Scorpio is also a very sexual sign, but the difference is Gemini sort of wants to see everybody, you know, like, how do I say this? Remember I said about the different flavors? Gemini would like to be intimate with many different types of people, where Scorpio just wants that one. They're very sexual, but they want monogamy. So Gemini, you may date a lot, you know, if you have it on the cusp of your fifth. And you may be indecisive about who I want. I like Sherry, I like Mary, I like Susan, I don't know, you know. But, um, so you may have a larger sexual appetite, and you may date more than... You could even date more than one person at a time, too. I want to say the person who makes you probably settle down is somebody who can keep up with you mentally. Somebody who's quick-witted just like you are. Somebody who's, um, you know, just as articulate and could talk about anything and everything. That's who you're going to like. Okay, so cancer. If you have cancer on your fifth house cusp, what do you like? Well, you like a partner who's all about home and family. You like a partner who is nurturing and kind and probably really good with kids. Um, you also, the things that you find fun, may be spending time with your kids. It may be cooking a meal at home with your family and just enjoying the presence of everyone with you. It could be, you could be love decorating your home. You know, you love, maybe you love to fluff your nest. <laughs> you know, your nesters, you know, for sure. So this could be somebody who loves to, even if you're a guy with this placement, you, maybe you just love DIY, do it yourself, love fix, fixing up your house. Um, you could also love family functions. Maybe you just love to host family functions all the time. And I would say you could be clingy in romance, in relationships. You could be like, I just want this one person forever and ever. And uh, you could be a bit clingy. Um, I would say your feelings pretty much run deep, you know. Um, you're very sensitive when it comes to dating and when it comes to your feelings. You know, you could be really hypersensitive. You could draw to you partners who are also hypersensitive, just as yourself, just like yourself. Um, but I would say things that you enjoy are feeling nurtured, feeling like um, really bonded with your partner. It's the whole thing about um, nurturing and bonding together that really, really cements you and makes you feel really at home. Um, but you I want to say you enjoy everything from doing things with your family and fixing up your home or, you know, <clears throat> very much the nesting sign. Okay, um, Leo, if you have Leo on your fifth house cusp, you are a ton of fun. <laughs> well, I would say that you're probably really creative. You love doing creative things. You, you probably have creative ideas. Um, you know, you may attract to you a partner or a dating partner who is very charismatic, who is very good looking, who walks in a room and everybody notices. It's that type of partner. Um, also, it's a fun sign. Your partner would be fun and, and you enjoy anything fun. You know, you probably, you might be the life of the party and um, the people you draw in could be the life of the party. They could be just as charismatic as you are. But I want to say that you enjoy anything that's fun and um, you, I want to say you like being number one when it comes to dating. You do not like being in second position. So if you know that somebody's put you at second best or you feel like an option rather than a priority, it's not going to work for you at all. You'll be so turned off. And I would say that even, you know, the people that you draw into your life, you like partners who treat you like number one and who want to be number one as well. I would say you could be very generous when it comes to dating. You maybe like to spoil your partner with lavish gifts, but you expect something in return. I mean, not that you're greedy or anything, but if you see that you spent, I don't know, a lot of money on your partner and you bought them an extravagant gift for Christmas, 
or their birthday and they just give you a card and say, oh, you know what, I'm sorry, I forgot. I didn't have time to get you a gift. You'll be pissed. Or if, um, now if they're broke, I think that you would be understanding. But even, if, you know, I want to say if you're dating someone with this placement and you're like, well, I don't know what to get them, so I'm not going to, I'm not going to go nuts, you know. If you don't have a lot of money, you could, they would, a Leo person with this placement would still appreciate if you made them a nice meal, if you, you know, you could do things that don't cost money, you know, if you could, you could create a card that's a really beautiful poem inside, and you could create them a beautiful dinner, and then maybe give them a massage later or something, they would really appreciate that, and even if it didn't cost you, the fact that you're putting in effort, that's what Leos look at, this person put a lot of effort, and, and that's what they appreciate. And they like being, they like feeling like they're a priority to you and not just an option. That's key. Okay. Um, and I want to say they're romantic too. They're very passionate because it's a fire sign. So if you have your fifth house cusp in Virgo, um, Virgo is a sign that you would probably attract to you partners or dating partners who are very analytical, um, really good with communication. But they're probably, they could be picky, <laughs> you know, Virgos like to nitpick and they're like, they could be neat freaks. You yourself could have these traits as well. Um, but they also are givers, you know. So a Virgo would be, you know, when it comes to romance, they're the type where they would give the massage and they're really good at usually giving. So they always say the best massage therapists are Virgo. Go figure. Anyway, but they're the type where they want to please you. So when it comes to intimacy, you would, you would surely be a priority in that regard with them wanting to make sure that you're satisfied. Um, but I want to say you could be this way too with having this in your fifth house cusp. You could be a giver as well. Um, but for sure, you're going to be a picky person. You're probably going to be picky as far as the type of partner you like or the kind of person you want to date. You know, you may say, well, you know, you know, some people say, would I throw this person out of bed for, for having crumbs? And some people are like, not if you look like this. You may say, yes. Yes, I would throw him out for crumbs, you know. Or um, he's a smoker. I do not like, it's like kissing an ashtray. I, I do not like that. You could have a list of, of things that you find as a turn on and a turn off. And if people don't match your list, you could be overly picky. So, um, you know, I want to say... Even though Virgo is a very giving sign, they could be relatively, you know, pretty picky as far as what they're looking for. And it's okay to be choosy, you know, but just don't make sure you're so choosy that you're isolating yourself where it's like there's nobody good enough. Nobody's 100%. Just keep that in mind. You find 80, you grab it. <laughs> Say yes. Okay. Um, if you have Libra on the fifth house cusp, this would mean that you, you want somebody who's elegant, who's graceful who can handle themselves um, in, in any situation. This is somebody who handles themselves with class and grace. In other words, they know what to say and when and what not to say. So you, this is somebody, you want someone who you'll never be embarrassed by or this isn't somebody who, um, I want to say, you, carry, you embody these characteristics yourself, being that Libra is going to be on the fifth house cusp for you. And you know, sometimes you see that person who it's a beautiful dinner or whatever, and they feel the need to belch loudly um, at the table, this would not be the person for you. Um, you. You're quite classy. You want somebody who knows how to handle themselves with class and grace. Somebody who um, maybe walks in a room and people notice them because they're just dressed so nice. And, you know, don't forget, it's ruled by Venus. So you want somebody who's good looking, who handles himself in a, in a, in a very graceful way beautiful manner and somebody who you're not going to be embarrassed um, if you introduce these people to your parents or whatever that they're not going to be belching in public or you know what I'm saying somebody who you know um, what are the you know you ever hear that's that saying well this per you could dress this person up but you can't take them out this would not apply like li Libra would be the, the sign it would be the type of person where they look good and and you, you could take them out you know that they're going to handle themselves with grass class, grace, and elegance. Um, I want to say that this person is probably extremely well-mannered. That's what you're looking for. You're looking for somebody who has tact and who's well-mannered and who, you know, is well-versed on etiquette. 
you know, that would be for you. And things that you find fun would probably love probably being surrounded in beauty. You love being surrounded in a har harmony environment where everybody's getting along. You hate when people aren't getting along or there's a lot of tension. You probably just can't stay on that. Um, also, you might like be the type of person where you love going to, um, I don't know, maybe seeing beautiful artwork at a museum or um, going to an opera. It's very classy. Um, going to a play, maybe downtown or something. Doing you, you like the refined and sophisticated sorts of things. You know, a restaurant for you would be maybe a five star restaurant where you know people are dressed up. You would love to go places where you're dressed up, and where you know you can show that you're not that you have to get dressed up to be classy. That's not true. But you, you like this kind of thing. You, you, you like the finer things. Because let's face it, your fifth house would be ruled by Venus. So, and you like to, um, I would say, you know, the finer things in life you would find enjoyable. Beautiful places, being around, surrounded in beauty and harmony would be your thing. And uh, I would say if you're going to treat somebody who have this, has this placement, if you, you know, have the money, <laughs> that's true, they might be more money for this person, but going to a nice, beautiful play, a beautiful five-star restaurant, you know, something where this really classy and elegant, they, they would really like that. And not that all people with this placement are about money, but you can also do nice things. Uh, like even if you were to buy them flowers, beautiful flowers, or, you know, um, decorate the house for them and make a beautiful meal. Doesn't always cost money. But it's all, for this person, it's all about ambiance, I would say. They like being surrounded in beauty. So you turn the lights down, you light some candles or, you know, um, nice music. And, you know, anything tacky or tawdry or slutty, this person would not be for. It, it has to be classy and elegant and romantic, you know, I would say. Okay. Um, if you have your fifth house cusp in Scorpio, I would say that you draw in the type of people who are a little mysterious, perhaps secretive, and you, um, they may even like the occult or things like this, um, but you also would like really intense partners, people who really want to get to know their partner on a mind, body, soul level, and very sexual. Scorpio is a very sexual sign, so you'd be wanting to date someone who probably has a large... Um, sexual appetite and you may carry this with yourself as, as well. One thing with this placement too, if you're a male or a female and you have this in Scorpio, um, especially if it's the 12th, well no no this is the fifth house, sorry. I was just gonna say same thing with Venus in the 12th house, okay? But if you have this placement where on your fifth house cusp it's Scorpio, you might like guys who are unavailable. Or you might like guys where you have a secret affair. It's a secretive kind of a, you know, thing where you're seeing each other in private. And, you know, you need to be careful of this because I deal with some clients who have this. And it's always they're ending up disappointed because they want this intense, you know, relationship with this person. This mind, body, soul attraction with this other person. And they're not getting it and they don't know why. Because they keep going for unavailable partners. You can still have that same type of connection, but um, just make sure this placement could also be, you know, like I said, secret love affairs. So, you know, you could constantly be going for married people or people who are not, not available in some way. So I would say if you have this, especially in Scorpio, which is a very intense sign, you need to be with someone who's available because in order for you to get your needs met, you need someone even though you like the secretive type and you like the type of uh, partner who is mysterious, you can get that in other ways, you know. Um, and you can also get that mind, body, soul connection. So just keep that in mind. But you also like things that you might fun, find fun might be the psychic realm or astrology. You may really find that fun and interesting. Things that are hidden and like, um, you know, you sort of kind of figuring out things that are not so obvious to others. And, you know... I want to say some people may find astrology or psychic realm or tarot kind of, you shouldn't do that and it's not good for you. If you have a fifth house in Scorpio, this is really going to interest you and really going to intrigue you. Anything that's hidden, anything that's, you know, which is why secret 
relationships kind of intrigue you too, but you got to watch out. Okay, um, Sagittarius. If you have your fifth house cusp in Sagittarius, you love perhaps foreign people, foreign lands, um, long distance travel. You could like a partner or dating a person who's from a different place than you are. Or maybe they speak a foreign language. You know, this would be really of interest to you. Also, you may be really attracted to um, partners who may be a teacher. You know, maybe, or maybe they've gone really far in school, but highly educated, quite spiritual. This could be somebody who's quite spiritual. Or you could embody this yourself because of the fifth house cusp. This is how you exude fun. And um, the people you attract to date may also exude these qualities. So it could be somebody who's extremely intelligent, spiritual, religious, philosophical type of person. Could be a person who's foreigner or uh, speaks foreign language from a foreign land. You might like long distance travel. These things you may find fun. But you could also date somebody, you know, through maybe you travel and you meet somebody who's you know speaks another language maybe there's fr they're French and you really just love this person something like this this is what a fifth house uh, person in Sagittarius would be interested in it now if you have your um, fifth house cusp in Capricorn you really like things um, fun for you maybe work or fun for you maybe somebody who's more mature or older you know you may draw on an older type of person or somebody who has their stuff together, a very established person. Sometimes a uh, fifth house cusp, um, you want somebody who really, um, I want to say is established in their career. It could be even a CEO or something like this, you know. Um, and maybe the thing that you find fun is something to do with a job. You may find a, a job fun or you may be serious when it comes to dating. This person would definitely be serious when it comes to dating. You know, you're ruled by Saturn, this house. So when it came to dating, you'd be like, I'm not just looking to have flings. I'm not looking to have uh, just a good time. I'm looking for the long time. And if you have Capricorn on the fifth house cusp, you may, um, you know, you may also the way you have fun and party, you may be a responsible partier. Like here, I'll tell you, I have Capricorn on my fifth house cusp. And I do not drink, I do not smoke. And you know what's so funny is people may say, well, you know, you're no fun, you don't drink. And you know, I've had so many friends say to me, well, well, I feel weird drinking if you're not drinking. And I just, I don't feel I need to get loaded to have a good time. If they want to, that's on them, but you know. I think that a person with this placement would automatically be really responsible. And it's true because for me, having this placement, I do like to be in control, I will say. So I don't like that out of control feeling. And it's so true when it comes to dating. Uh, you know, I'm not looking just for the good time, you know, I'm looking for the long time. So if I would say if somebody I knew right away is just looking for a fling, I would say, you know, thanks, but no thanks, you know. So you could be more, you know, responsible, you know, and also look for where your Saturn is in your chart. Because I do find work fun. My Saturn's in my 10th house. So the things that I find fun are things for my career. I love building my website. I do like doing these videos for you guys and helping and answering questions. And I, I do readings too, which I love. So I am, do, I am lucky. I'm doing something that I really like. But, you know, you need to look at what your Saturn, um, what house your Saturn's in. To figure out what it is exactly that you yourself finds fun. Okay, um, and this person, oh, this is true, this, this is also true. In romance, if you have Capricorn here, you could be, you know, maybe you're controlling a little bit in relationships. You could be like, no, 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 no this is how it's going to be. You know, Capricorn is kind of a more controlling sign, you know. So I would say, um, and you know, when it can't, when it comes to romance, this person could uh, also be very like uh, maybe a little prudish sometimes. You know, it could be a little prudish when it comes to romance, but that's not true because it's not true for me. But it depends on where you have your Mars and Venus, and it also depends on your eighth house cusp and what's in the eighth house to really give you a colorful picture about how this person would be romantically. But for the most part, just in dating. When it comes to dating, I would say this person would be quite serious. 
you know, not looking just for the, the sportism wouldn't be a flying person at all, I wouldn't say. Okay, so, all right, um, what's the next one? Oh, Aquarius, if you have in your fifth house cusp Aquarius, you may be really attracted to the zany types, you know, the oddballs, and, you know, people, the weirder the better, you know, or you may like things that are quite eccentric, like just things that are just out of the ordinary. You too may like astrology and, and um, psychic realm and all that stuff. That might be interesting to you. Um, but I want to say anything that's kind of, um, you know, just the weirder the better. You may love to dress zany clothes or things that don't match or you just love to wear different kind of earrings or, you know, um, you know, I know women who do this too. They like wearing one earring and then the other earring is different and they just like it, you know. Or you could be very, um, you really like, for dating, you would really like an intelligent type of partner. Somebody who is, if, they're, if the lights are on and nobody's home, you would not be interested. And you would also like somebody who, um, more of a humanitarian-like type person. You know, if this person is, you know, I want to say close-minded, you may not like them. You know, you may want somebody who's broad-minded or feels like fairness for everybody. You know, you would not want to date someone probably who showed racist tendencies or, you know, inequality in some way it would really turn you off. So I would say um, a highly intelligent person, somebody who's a little bit eccentric or zany. Uh, you probably like having fun doing weird things, who knows? Um, but yeah, that's who, that's who you are. You might like eccentric subjects like astrology or, you know, psychic realm, tarot, tarot and all this. You may like those kind of subjects as well. Um, which some people would say weird, but I think you're all good in my book. <laughs> so, okay. Um, now if you have your fifth house cusp in Pisces, I would say you probably really like the romantic types, you know, um, ones who make it like, uh, you know, the, the more fantasy, the better probably for you. You would love a partner who maybe made you dinner and rose petals all over the house with candles lit and some soft music and maybe gave you a massage or you know took you to a beautiful restaurant and you went dancing and somebody who's romantic somebody who um puts energy and effort into romance you know you want somebody who's romantic so if in, with this placement, I would say you could attract partners who are creative, art, artists, musicians, writers, um, you name it, a designer, you know, you could attract really creative types. But as I always say in astrology, there's octaves, especially Pisces, because there's so many different levels on that one. It's, it's um, a higher octave, you can attract someone who's really spiritual or artistic. At a lower octave, you could attract someone who maybe has chemical dependencies, drugs, alcohol. So I always say that if you have this in your fifth house cusp, you really have to make sure that you're looking at your partner clearly and not looking at them for who they, you think they are. Like, he only had 20 drinks today. He doesn't do this often, just once in a while. But this is, could be a red flag to it, but problem that you really don't want to see. Or... It could play out this way, where you yourself display these tendencies. You like to party. You like to escape life once in a while, and it's fun for you. You know, sometimes they say musicians make their, some of their best music when they're bloated. But um, just keep this in mind, though. If you have your fifth house cusp in Pisces, you may like this type of stuff. So, you know, if, you know, you may like zoning out of life sometimes, you know, which might not be the best thing for you. But... You could be highly spiritual and um, wanting a spiritual partner. You could be religious. You could be uh, really gifted as far as musically inclined or decorating or singing. Or You have to look at what planets are in this fifth house too. So anyway, this is my synopsis. And I just did a video on the seventh house. I hope you could see the difference. Fifth house is what you find fun and it's who you may want to date. The seventh house is marriage could be they're very different. Maybe the type of person you want to date is different than the person you're going to marry. You also want to look at your Mars. If you're a woman, it tells you what you're interested in if 
you know, if you're a girl, the kind of guy you're interested in. And Venus. You want to look at your Venus. Um, if you're a guy, it tells you the type of woman you're interested in. This adds to the whole colorful flavor of your whole chart. You know, so sometimes, you know, um, you kind of add bits and pieces together from the fifth house, the seventh house, Mars and Venus will give you information. Now, I will say, if you are, you know, a gay or a lesbian person, people ask me this all the time. Do I look at my bars or do I look at my Venus? I always say, if you're um, a gay or lesbian, then you are going to look at the sign that you resonate with. And for your partner, you're going to look at the sign that they feel they resonate with. You know, so what you would do is you would ask your partner, like, let's say their um, Venus was an Aries. So that would be the type of, you know, do they go for go-getter types or people who are really adventurous? Or let's say if their Mars was an Aquarius, do you go for eccentric types or people who are really intelligent, you know? So you, you see which way they go and you can know, okay, this person goes more with their Mars or this person goes more with their Venus. I've been asked that a lot by, you know, some people who don't know. And, and they're like, well, I'm, you know, I'm a gay or I'm a lesbian person and I don't know what to look at. And um, I needed to add that information because uh, I feel bad because it's like I'm excluding, you know, I want to include everybody. And so everybody's interested in astrology and everybody understands their chart. So hopefully this helps you out. Anyway, I hope you kind of understand the difference between the fifth and the seventh house. And just know the eighth house, fifth house is kind of like, you know, sex, but fun sex, like not like deep feelings with it. It's like we're just having fun. Now, the eighth house is deep intimacy, and it, it, it is like deep feelings are resonating in that house. So if you want to know like, sex for you on a deeper level, you look at your eighth house. This is just the house of fun. Pleasure, dating, it, you know, it's, it's just the house that maybe piques your interest. But as things get deeper for you, you want to look at your seventh house of marriage, and then eighth house, eighth house is intimacy. It's also other things, but I'm, this is my romance. Um, series here so we're sticking plans for the month of February I also want to say that I'm doing a giveaway so if you haven't participated in the Valentine's giveaway you should do so I put, we put a link at the bottom anyway have a good day and I hope you like the video